In the previous video lesson, we studied a leaning ladder, and we found if there's no friction at the wall and only friction at the ground, then there's an equation that describes the minimum possible angle that the ladder can lean and still maintain equilibrium. So we found that this theta minimum, if there's a coefficient of friction at the ground, was equal to the inverse tangent of 1 over 2 mu. So for example, if the coefficient of friction is equal to, oh, maybe it's, um, maybe it, it rained so the grass was wet, and it decreases the coefficient of friction down to something like 0 0.75, well, grab your calculators and check and see if you agree. That corresponds to a minimum safe angle of about 33.7 degrees. So the question goes something like this. If the ladder is now leaning exactly at that critical minimum angle, and then you start to climb up the ladder, would you be able to safely make it to the top? So I'd say probably not. And so this guy realizes that and decides to incline his ladder at an angle greater than the minimum safe angle. So we'll say for the sake of this example, that the ladder is leaning at an angle of how about 50 degrees. So let's give some other values. Let's say that the person climbing the ladder is 90 kilogram and the ladder itself is 10 kilograms. And we'll also say that the ladder has a length of how about 6 meters. Okay, so let's draw this again and figure out how far up the ladder would he be able to climb? Now if that answer for x, uh, let's change it from x to d. How's that? If the answer for d comes out to be greater than 6 meters, then it means he can not only climb to the top, but when he's at the very top, it would still be extremely stable. So let's see if we can derive an equation for d in terms of the person's mass, the ladder's mass, the length of the ladder, and the angle at which it's inclined. So we'll turn the picture into a rigid body diagram and show all the forces. So let's see. First locate the center of mass of the ladder. So that's the point at which the force, capital MG, is applied. And then the person, if they're at a distance D from the axis of rotation, and we'll suggest that the axis of rotation is down here at the bottom. Okay, then their force vector points down as well. Notice I drew that vector longer because this person again is 90 kilograms but the ladder is only 10 kilograms. And there's a couple more forces. There's a normal force acting at the wall. There's an upward normal force acting at the ground. And there's a force of friction pointing to the left. So a couple of these forces are going to be non-torque producing. The normal force at the ground and the friction force don't produce any torque relative to this axis. So to maintain rotational equilibrium, the clockwise torque has to balance the counterclockwise torque. So the only clockwise torque is due to the normal force of the wall. And then there are two forces that contribute to the counterclockwise torque, both the weight vectors. So the clockwise torque is the normal force of the wall times the lever arm, which is the full length of the ladder, times sine of theta. And then the two counterclockwise torques, let's see, one of them is capital MG acting with a lever arm of L over 2 because it's at the center of mass. And then it'd be sine of, now wait a minute, if this is theta, yeah, this right here is 90 minus theta. Okay, sine of 90 minus theta plus the force mg with a lever arm of d, and that's also times sine of 90 minus theta. We'll cross out sine of 90 minus theta and replace it with cosine theta. And we'll cross out normal force of the wall and replace it with friction force, because after all, the net force along the x-axis has to equal zero. 
Okay, so we've got step one, step two, and step three. In step four, we can divide both sides of the equation by cosine theta. And we can also replace friction force with mu times the normal force of the ground. Now I know in general that a force of static friction is less than or equal to mu times the normal force of the ground, but we're really trying to find what's the maximum value of d. And so if we're finding the maximum height he can climb to, then we're finding the maximum force of static friction, which would just be strictly equal to mu times normal force of the ground. So mu times normal force of the ground replaces friction force, and there's still the L and then sine theta over cosine theta gives us tangent theta. And then on the right side, we're left with capital MG L over 2 plus lowercase mg d. So if we're trying to solve for d, we should say mg d is equal to, now wait a minute, normal force of the ground can be substituted as well, right? We can replace that with the sum of both masses multiplied by g. So we have mgd equals mu times m plus m g l tangent theta minus capital M G L over 2. So we can factor out or cancel out the G and then factor out the L. So we have M times D is equal to L times the quantity mu M plus M tangent theta minus capital M over 2. So we've got our algebraic solution. D is equal to L times mu M plus M tangent theta minus capital M over 2, all divided by lowercase m. So let's see what we get if we plug in the values given in this example problem. We would get D equals 6 meters, that was the given length of the ladder, times, I believe we said the coefficient of friction is 0 0.75, that's right, 0 0.75, and then uh, his mass is 90, the mass of the ladder is 10, so this comes out to 100. And then he leaned the ladder greater than the minimum safe angle. So I believe we said he's leaning it at 50 degrees. And then capital M over 2, that would be 10 over 2, that would give us 5. Divided by 90. Uh, oh, and we left out the units here. So this is kilograms, this is kilograms, this is kilograms. So all those units go away. So our distance should just be in meters, which makes sense. So grab a calculator and see what you get. So I get D is equal to 6 meters multiplied by 0 0.9376. And since this is, uh, I'm sorry, less than 1, then it means D is less than L. So he doesn't quite climb safely to the top of the ladder. In fact, the maximum D would be equal to about 5.63 meters. So the question could be, uh, how much higher should he raise the angle so that he can successfully climb to the top? I'll leave that second part of this problem for you to solve.